spoiler alert. Please be advised that the following video will contain spoilers for Lovecraft Country. What's up everybody, it's me E-Man from E-Man's Movie Reviews. Jackie Reed is a TV, radio personality, and journalist. She was the lead anchor of the BET Nightly News from 2001 to 2005. And she's currently one of the co-hosts of the NBC New York affiliate show called New York Live. Jackie is a huge fan of HBO's Lovecraft Country, and after discovering my YouTube channel, she invited me to her Instagram Live to talk about the show. I just wanted to share with you all the very fun conversation we had in case you missed it. I'll also be posting some of her information down in the description, just in case if you'd like to follow Jackie and learn more about her. Anyway, check out our chat. Hi, hi you guys. Okay, you ready to talk Lovecraft Country? So I'm waiting on my guest to join me, Emmanuel Noisette, known as E-Man. He is a film critic and over on YouTube, he does a fabulous breakdown week by week of Lovecraft. If you have not watched Lovecraft up to the series finale, the season finale rather, there are gonna be spoilers flying all over. Um, but I had so many questions. If you saw my post um, on Sunday night after the episode or Monday morning, I can't remember which one. Child, let me tell you, I have so many unanswered, unanswered questions. Is Tick really dead, right? Is there going to be a season two? You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm so excited to talk to this man. Let me tell you, he knows Lovecraft country. Should I call you E-Man or oh, we have a terrible connection? I don't know if that's uh -oh. me or you, but how are you? I, I can see you. We're good. I'm, a, I'm good. I'm good. Can you hear me? Or like, yep. is, am I okay? Lighting cool? Or, You're all I don't good. Know, this I, love, I love okay. the background uh, situation <laughs> you got going on over the shoulder. I, I, why am I not surprised? I, look, I'm, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to be on your level one day when I grow up. So, you know, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to keep up. Let me tell you, before we start breaking down uh, this the show and the season finale, I have to say, I was just doing a deep dive on social media after the season finale, and I would no, it was before this. It was the, I, I found you like a couple of episodes ago, and when I okay. tell you, it was everything I needed for an episode breakdown, right? I mean, thank you. It was it was so informative, while being entertaining and quite funny. I have to say. <laughs> quite funny. Thank you. But also the historical references. I mean, I was like, okay, this is part entertainment, <laughs> move, you know, show review, college class. It was everything. It was everything I needed. Um, and so I found you, like I said, episode seven. So I haven't gone back to watch the first ones, but I plan to because I learned something um, with every episode of what you do on YouTube. So we're going to talk about you in a minute. Let's okay. get into Lovecraft Country. Let me start with yes. asking you what you thought about the season finale. Uh, in a word, it's a lot. It's a lot. A lot. If you could put a lot in one word, a lot. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I mean, right? <laughs> you know, look, Misha Green is just sitting here just throwing everything at us all at once. Um, you know, now, so I am a film critic, so I do kind of have to, you know, get the real um i do honestly feel it was a little rushed um i feel like there, I, like i feel like we could have done with two more episodes you know just to kind of flesh everything out a little bit more you know because you know i i still feel some kind of way about ruby you know i'm i'm on the train right now like justice for ruby i don't like the whole off scene stuff yeah i understand the whole you know you got to surprise people with the twist i get that but my girl Ruby done came too far, you know, yeah. just to be done away with like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, at the same time, you know, you still got everything that this show constantly promises, which is uh, black girl magic, black people magic. You know, um, we still got some of the historical stuff, uh, especially with the Emmett Till story. Yeah. <sighs> You know, it, it, this was very fulfilling, satisfying, but I think at the same time, this show is going to have the unrealistic challenge of trying to please everybody. Yeah. You know, it, it, there's just way too much. It's, in my opinion, it's kind of like saying, hey, 
what's the fix for all black problems in all society and history? You can't do it. Nobody's going to have a one solution, one size fits all type of thing. Um, and you know, this show is going to give you what it can. And I think the best thing about it is just the fact that, um, this is an example of what happens when you actually let black creatives do what they do and just yeah. let them be free. So, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I love Misa Green with things that she's done in the past, particularly underground, right? I mean, she's mm -hmm. clearly talented, but I had no very. idea that since she was very young, I think she said she was five, year old, five years old when she first fell in love with the horror genre. And mm -hmm. boy, uh, did that pay off that love for that because it just I feel like it was all in all the entire series was well done um, mm -hmm. you know as far as uh, storytelling special effects um, what they added to it the historical perspective um, mm -hmm. I, I really thought that that was well done but yes I agree with you with the season finale I feel like it was rushed one of the things that I wrote on my Instagram the next day I had all these questions I was like this can't be it there ha I could do with a, at least one more episode, maybe two, or even the promise of a season two. I mean, you're an insider. insider. What are you hearing about season two? I'm hearing a maybe. You know, I, look, the most I've heard is they're in talks. What? You know, nothing is final. Um, now, I have I purposely not read the books because I really wanted to judge the show on its own merit, you know. Okay. And from what I hear, you know, they already kind of went in a different direction from the books. So I wonder if you do a season two, do you borrow maybe some uh, from some of the other novels from Matt Ruff or do you just carve a completely new path? Um, I think that there are, I mean, two, two things I would personally like to see if they continue this story. Uh, I would like to see a time jump. You know, I want to see them go maybe 10, 20, 30 years in the future. Um, I want to see maybe young George Freeman uh, see what happens with him. I mean, because, hey, at this point, he got a dope sister cousin with Diana. <laughs> um, you know, he's, he's got a, a, a wonderful we mother. Still <laughs> we still don't know. We still don't know. He's got a wonderful mother with uh, Letitia F. and Lewis. Um, you know, and, and you got a scientific, you know, auntie cousin person with Hippolyta. Uh, so, you know, like, it'd be just kind of dope to see what George Freeman, you know, would do. And you maybe Tick comes back, you know, um, or you could even do a side story with uh, Diana and her black Shoggoth, which I personally like to call Shaft because he a bad mother shut my mouth, you know. Tell you. I, I got to get on you, though. <laughs> Why did you just in this in your last review you referred to d's arm as a walking dead arm a crypt keeper arm <laughs> and you also talked about her not be, her arm not being moisturized or whatever why are you giving that girl's arm such a hard time i'm i'm gonna flip the question to you and say <laughs> but was i wrong i mean was it was it wrong okay. <laughs> That was wrong. That was wrong. She is still a child. But let me ask you, why do you think that they made that call? So that she can have this this uh, mechanical arm and play that role, you know, yeah. be the woman that I think that she's the woman that gave Tick the book and pushed him back or, or however he described it. Don't you think in the future? Yeah. Oh, I definitely think that's her, you know. And look, I mean, they turned the into, you know, uh, the Walking, or uh, not the Walking Dead arms. You got me thinking about that now. <laughs> I mean, they turned her into like the Winter Soldier and she had to go all Wayne Brady at the end on Christina and everything. But like the the, the issue I kind of have with what they did was I get it. Like I totally understand she was sitting here reading the Lovecraft Country book at the very end. So she could see whatever the future had in store, you know. Um, and maybe that creates like a bit of a time paradox because she's reading the book that she later gives to Tick, but then Tick gives it back to her. And, you know, so yeah. there's that little time loop. Right. Um, but I think what it kind of represented, at least to me, and it was a little depressing because I have a 13 year old daughter, you know, around these age and I was hearts I, like my heart was crushed. I was like, my goodness, I, I would feel terrible if my daughter was driven to the point where she's now a murderer, you know, like that would just break me, you know? And I, I think 
part of that is maybe, and I don't know if it's intentional, it's just my interpretation. I think it's just kind of representative of how our young black women, our black girls are forced to grow up way too fast. And, you know, they're subject to having to resort to violence or hatred or bitterness when they can't just be girls, I know. you know, so it, it, it's, it's tough. It's tough. It just seems like, you know, when, when we learned, I think in this episode about Hannah, the pregnant slave that we saw throughout and the rage that she, she says the fire was her rage, that, 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 that when I saw D at the end being so angry, right? to have yeah. the rage that she had because yeah. where was everybody? Like, you know, I love that you kind of put out the, all of these like unanswered questions. Like where was everybody towards the end? And why was Dee just wandering around with this creature that now is protecting her? Why was she wandering around like that way? How did she just happen upon, you know, Christine? Where was everybody else? You know, and, and that I think goes to the other theme of how black women are ignored. You know, and how, especially yeah, black girls, yeah. they're just, yeah. they just ignored. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm sitting here thinking, like, nobody was looking for her. Nobody said nothing. Yeah. Like, that, that, that's not even a thought, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. That was <sighs> part in, I think, was it episode eight where those, those uh, twins, those the picking in, the thriller Ooh, twins. What yeah. Was it, Bopsy and Mopsy. I don't remember. What Bopsy and Topsy, I think. Bopsy and something Topsy. like that. That yeah. was the scariest. That was the one that gave me nightmares. That episode. Mm. And shout out to those two uh, fantastic dancers, those women that mm -hmm. pulled off that role. Um, and the makeup team, because they yes. were incredible. Yes. But yeah, but the fact that he was just running around in that episode, um, all on her own, it just made, like, they never really dealt with that. Although Ruby did allude to it in the next episode, saying, hey, but she did it too. They yeah, exactly. Home, exactly. Right? I'm just glad that he finally won your favor, even though you talked about the child so bad with his yes. arm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but let me ask you, do you think Tick is dead if there's a season two? Because you, like me, I want Uncle George to come back, and I can't accept that Tick is dead, and I can't accept that Ruby is dead just like that. I need though. I need him <sighs> to come back. In a world where anything can happen, why yeah. can't those three come back? Okay, so a couple of things. One, I think for Misha Green, she is committed, and it's not a bad thing. She's committed to bold storytelling. Yeah. Um, and I think with bold storytelling, sometimes your hero's got to die. You know, um, yeah, we might not like it, no. but at the same time, it still captures us, right? It still engages us. And as a storyteller, that's what you want, you know? Uh, it's not always about making you feel good, but it's always about making you feel something. Um, as far as Tick coming back, I mean, there, you know, like in my last video, I was talking about how, like in the last finale episode, there was like this Messiah, Jesus Christ comparison with Tick, you know, and a lot of similarities of what he did throughout the episode. Um, so there, I think there's groundwork for, uh, I don't want to say a resurrection, but he could come back in some way, shape or form. Um, I think what the uh, last episode also showed us was that our ancestors are never truly gone. You know, maybe they're maybe Tick, Tick is chilling in the burning house that, you know, Hannah created. And whenever someone needs him, they can go back to that safe sp uh, space. Um, so he might come back in that form. Uh, now, one thing I was a little disappointed with was Miss Hippolyta, because with her little travel wristbands and stuff, um, she was able to go to parallel dimensions and times and all these yeah. different things. And we saw her chilling with Uncle George 2.0. And she took him from one place to another to keep mm -hmm. discovering stuff with her. Right. So when she just casually walked in and was just like, hey, what's going on, y'all? I'm like, excuse me, where's Uncle George 2.0? Right. What, what, you just going to show up empty-handed? Like, yeah. You, you could have brought my man with you, you know? Right. So, and for Ruby, that I think is something that is still up for debate because some people think she's dead. Other people are thinking, no, she's just in a coma, you know, like but like the other two. But the thing is the show, we, cause I like to watch it with a uh, caption. So I could really look at the language and stuff. They play around with the language so much. Yeah. Lancaster shot and killed William. 
but I got to keep him in a comatose state. So is he brain dead? Right. Like, are these people actually alive? I don't know. You know, so maybe Ruby is still alive and they just, you know, do something. I mean, they got the book of names. So it's kind of like, yo, when, the, when magic is involved, anything could happen. That's what I'm saying. Because it, to me, and tell me, tell me what you think about this. I mm -hmm. don't think that Christina's personality, um, it, it fits for her to have killed Ruby. Even if Ruby was betraying her, you know, Christina seems to be very practical. She had a mm -hmm. She was very focused. She mm -hmm. caught Ruby and what Ruby was doing. Mm -hmm. Why actually kill her? Why not just, you know, bind her in some kind of way? Or not bind her, but just keep her from, be, you know, take on her form, go with it. Why does she have to kill her? She didn't have to do that. So she doesn't a seem couple, like to be, to be that type of person. I think she is. And yeah. I'll tell you why. So two, two, two things. One, for the spell, right? Uh, to work because if you look at what she told Ruby about how the magic works and how she made that spell work for that blood potion um, the first part is like I want to say it's intention so you need like energy you need something and I think that energy that they talk about is like a high level of emotion so when William died that was really emotional for uh, Christina at the time so that's why she said um, I used William's death for his like resurrection you know okay. in a sense so i think she had to kill ruby someone who she did love um in order to make that potion work but why does she have to do that uh i think when it comes to uh christina she is probably one of the most ambiguous antagonists that is trying to play the role of the villain yeah. and um the comparison that you know once i kind of thought about it a little bit more <sighs> I think Christina embodies the stereotype of white liberal feminist women. Yeah. And it's where they will do the performative stuff. You know, they will do the things it's like the fake allyship. And I don't want to say it's fake as in disingenuous. It's just fake as in it's blind, you know, whereas they'll be like, no, 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 I'm not racist. No, no, no. I support you. But at the end of the day, they put their own personal goals ahead of the allyship that they say that they support at no matter what cost. Yeah. So you have someone like Christina that's willing to help these black folks only to achieve her own goal, which was getting immortality. So even if that means, yeah, I got to help, uh, you know, Diana here and there, but that's only so I can get ticked. Yeah, I gotta help uh, Let uh, Letty, but that's really just so I can secure that baby because of the blood, just in case. Um, yeah, I gotta, you know, I love Ruby and everything, but I'm gonna kill you because I need that potion so I can go become immortal. You know, so at the end of the day, it's it's her drive to put her goals above everyone and everyone else that still makes her a villain in that sense and not a true ally, even though. I do think she actually still loves Ruby because keep in mind she keep she kept her promise. Yeah, to, why did she do that? Because of her love for Ruby. She she helped Letty because that was Ruby's essentially dying wish, which was whatever you do, I don't care if you sacrifice Tig. Don't don't do my sister. You know, and I think that was kind of like the last minute thing for her to be like, I don't have to kill Letty. You know, I mean, I, apparently she'll body slam her and punch her in the face a couple times, but she didn't have to kill her. So she put that Mark of Cain on her at the very last moment. Let me ask you about Gia. Um, okay. Who Tick just did so wrong. Like you Ooh, said. Just like Mr. Mm. Listen, she's going to fly across the world. You know what I mean? <laughs> to another part of the world to come and try to help him. And he just played her. And then when Bogus. he needed her. He came up with an apology when he knew that. Right. But I thought that she could only turn into that multi-tentacle creature when she was climaxing during sex. <sighs> you know, right? it's funny. It's funny because when you're dealing with fictional magic, it's so hard to like stick to the rules because it's fiction. I, I mean, I get it. You know, I just to me, it's just one of those things where it's like, I'm not going to die on the hill trying to defend fictional magic. 
You know, like I was having a conversation, for example, with somebody about how um, Letty has the mark of Cain, right? So she's right. invulnerable at the moment. And if you recall during the Tulsa episode, while she was holding on to uh, Hattie's hand, uh-huh. Hattie's hand did not burn. And she was also holding on to the book and the book also did not burn. Right. But that's only because of the invulnerability. The moment she let go of Hattie's hand, the hand set on fire. Mm -hmm. But some people were like, how come the whole body didn't burn up? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I just saw what I saw. I just, I don't understand the rules of magic. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) So I, I, I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't even tell you. So many unanswered questions. I mean, what all in all all in all Mm. um what do you think of this series um do you think that it delivered on the scale that it needed to deliver to on an hbo um and that it indeed deserves a second season short answer yes um i think watchmen walk so this could fly you know um i i think i think that this was hopefully the beginning of more, you know, and the beginning of better. Um, I think this was like, even though this is not like exclusive only to black folks, um, because I've, I've seen a number of like people from across the world chiming in talking about like, Oh my gosh, I didn't know this or, Oh my gosh, this is so, you know, insightful. Um, I, I think that this is hopefully the beginning of something, um, where again, it just proves that creatives, you know, when you give them the space and the opportunity, they can deliver. And my benchmark for those type of things is the conversation. What kind of conversation is this doing? Because at the end of the day, any I don't care if it's TV, movies, uh, books, whatever, all of these things are a form of art. And art, at the end of the day, when you break it down to it, its essentials, it's one human being trying to do a form of communication with another. Yeah. Did it successfully communicate something? And does it get you to start thinking and also communicate? And the show did that. There's plenty to talk about. There's yeah. plenty to dissect. And to me, I will take that any day over some reality TV, something, whatever, like, you know, brain dead type of, you know, shows. Um, I absolutely love stuff like that. So, you know, does it deserve? A, first of all, yes, because I want a season two. You know, I'm sitting here like, we got so many questions left unanswered. You need to answer those questions, first of all. And there's still so many things that are, you know, that can be explored. I mean, I want to know, for example, when did Tick go in the future? What were white people rioting about at that time? Did he go to Charleston? You know, did he come to our time? Like said he went to Charlottesville. I think you said that in your videos. Yeah, like... What what's going on? Like what what is or did he go to uh the sixties, you know, or something like during the civil rights movement? Like I I got questions. We, <laughs> we all do. And I mean I just I find it hard to believe that a show that generated this much conversation um and activity on social media and beyond has not been greenlit for a season two. I yeah. find that really hard to believe. Someone on here on our comments said that the creators have already talked to Yahoo Entertainment about season two. Why are we not going back to HBO? I mean, I remember, you know, back, and I'm sure you were a Game of Thrones fan, I'm guessing, but, you know, yep. um, you know, back when that started, all the money that they were spending on that show, and they, before, it, it took years for it to really catch on. Yeah. So not yeah. Just something like this, you know, with all the people that are attached to it as executive producers, I have a hard time believing. Let me ask you about this. Back to the finale. Yeah. The baptism. Tell me your mm. thoughts on the significance of that. Because I felt like that was like, wait, what? what do, do we have time for a baptism here? You know, what that to you? So, so now you're going to put my seminary hat on. Um, I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, the one thing I started looking at, because Tick is an emotionally damaged person, right? Um, Coming from the Vietnam War, not Vietnam War, but coming from the Korean or American War, um, you know, going through the type of trauma that he's gone through, uh, I can understand how he would have a very difficult time being a believer of anything, you know, uh, let alone Christianity, you know? So, um, but, but lately we saw Letty progressively over the season growing 
in her faith, you know, and just really coming to terms about like what that faith means to her. And I think that when she went to uh, Tulsa, you know, in the past and she saw uh, Hattie and the amount of faith that Hattie had to sit here and burn alive while praying, I think that was just kind of like the tipping point for Letty. And the one thing that kind of struck me was like, you know, don't quote me on it, but there's like a passage in the Bible that talks about, you know, what do you do if like you're married or if your significant other is not a believer or whatever, um, your faith can save them, you know, like when you're together. And I kind of thought that that's, I know they didn't actually get married, but I kind of think that's what was going on was at the end of the day, the baptism was just at least another hedge of protection, you know, something, you know, to protect. We know that a uh, tick is going to go eventually, but at least maybe he can get a free pass. And this is also, you know, just yet another um, parallel to uh, the, the, the Jesus story, because Jesus also got baptized, you know, before he had to go, um, to his crucifixion as well. So I, that's just my assumption. I, you know, look, if, I, if Misha will come and talk to me, <laughs> I'm like, Misha, come and talk to me because I got questions. I got lots of questions. <laughs> well, listen, tell me what you think about the fact that in the end, Letty was able to not only bind Christina from magic, not knowing that D was going to come and kill her anyway, but mm -hmm. all white people. Ooh, when I say they was lucky, lucky, because in that world, there was a social hierarchy, right? I mean, if you was white, you had all the privileges, yeah. all the status. But then if you was magical and white, that was like a whole nother level. Yeah. So to me, I'm sitting here like, my goodness, you had a slave who was raped, abused and just tormented. And the best she could come up with besides protecting her family was just taking away some of that privilege, yeah. some of that hierarchy. Yeah. She could have blown y'all all away. She could have made y'all slaves. She could have done a whole lot worse. And the fact that, you know, cause this was all Hannah's spell, you know, that they yeah. taught to Letty. Um, but the fact that she like not only took that away, but she gave that to her family and essentially black folks, I want to say, um, I thought that that what, what that ended up doing was in this world, creating a sense of equality, you know, and to some extent it does kind of play into the, uh, the Hollywood trope of the magical Negro, you know, where uh, we do have to be exceptional at everything just to be equal, you know, and it, and it takes magic for us to be equal to racism, you know, to the power of racism, which is, Mind blowing, but sadly true. Yeah. So, um, you know, I thought it was a very interesting and very uh, powerful statement that they did that kind of spell. Even though I do feel bad for Harry Potter, like I'm like, yo, bro, what you about to do now? What you about to do now? I don't understand what they got against them. They should have had more black kids at that school. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Hello. Yeah, it's like like black kids can't do magic. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I, Can I ask you a question? Yes, please. How did you feel about Hippolyta going on her much needed journey, much needed, but leaving her daughter all alone? I I had such an issue with that, but I think it was an important uh I think it was an important episode. To, I think it was an important point to be made because for so many black women, uh, particularly so many women have to make that choice between yeah. being themselves or being what society wants you to be. Not that you don't want to be a wife, not that you don't want to be a mother, but it is what so many women have to give up. Not all. Because some women, you know, that's what they want in life. They want to be mothers. Mm -hmm. They want to be wives. And there's nothing wrong with that. But for, for, for so many women who society tells, this is what you have to do for fulfillment. This is what you're supposed to do in your life, right? And you have to, when that's not necessarily your goal or your dream for yourself, 
you do have to give up so much of yourself. You do have to bury so many of your dreams, right? And I and, and so much of your identity in order to, because you, you can't, it's hard to do both. It's mm -hmm. hard to do both when what is expected of you when as a woman in the mm -hmm. world, um, mm -hmm. when it comes to being a part of a family. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there were times that, I mean, now it's to the point where women can make a choice not to get married and not to become mothers. But for years, um, those ideas were considered very selfish. I mean, mm -hmm. one thing when I talk to young women, you know, that are in college and, you know, really starting their adult life, one thing that I say to them is, you have a choice, you know, you don't have to get married and you do not have to be a mother, you know, just really think about that. Think about whether mm -hmm. or not those are things that you want, that you really want for yourself, because there's nothing wrong with deciding not to do that. So I thought while I was upset that uh, Hippolyta went off uh, to chase these dreams, I understand it, but it still disappointed me because once you do become a mother, right? There is that responsibility that you have to protect the young, to protect your children. Um, yeah. So it was it, like, I get it. I get that she got caught up in that because as we learned when she visited with Uncle George in the different realm, I mean, I don't have, you know, that whole nerd thing that you do. So I don't, I don't get all that stuff. <laughs> so when she went to wherever she met Uncle George and they had that conversation, you know, it was, I thought it was fascinating for them to have that conversation within this series um, because I think it is a struggle for so many women. Depending on what your hopes and dreams for yourself were, you were you lose a bit of yourself when you become a wife, and particularly when you become a mother. Um, yeah. So I'm so I get it. I, I'm glad that they did it, um, but I did have I I did feel for Dee because she's just a girl. Um, yeah. And when you make that choice to be a mother, unfortunately, and I am not a mother, so I say this not knowing, but I do have a mother um, and I am a smart woman who's experienced life. You know, I do believe that once you have children, that uh, there is a commitment, a level of commitment that you have to make, you know, because yeah. you, yeah. you can give them up for adoption or, you know, you, you don't have to become a parent. But once you make mm -hmm. that choice, I think your primary um, focus your number one priority needs to be those children. So I was right. disappointed with her, but I'm glad that they showed us what she went off to do because I think that even today, that is a struggle for so many women. For sure. For yeah, sure. and I think that a yeah. lot of men don't understand that. And I think society as a whole doesn't get it. I mean, I was, yeah. at, a, I was at a prayer breakfast you know, for a, a black church. So it's like all these, you know, black women out there. And when I said to the young women in the audience, you don't have to get married. You don't have to, you know, have children. There was a, a collective gas. They were like, Ooh! the pearls were clutched. It was like. I was about to say, like, you did that at a prayer breakfast? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, was, I really want young, young women to know that, that there are choices. They got choices. Yeah. yeah. You have choices. If you want to be a scientist, yeah. if you want to be an astronaut, if whatever you want to do, you know, pursue those things. You don't have to be uh, a parent and you don't have to, to get mm -hmm. married, you know, or, it, you, you know, yeah. if you do those things. Think about redefining the roles that are set upon us as, you know, by society when it comes to that. You know, marry mm -hmm. a man who mm -hmm. wants to be a stay at home dad and you go off and chase those dreams, you know, but it's yeah, so yeah. I was I was torn about it. I was glad that it was it was a conversation that was presented within the, the series. Yeah, I, and I agree with you about um, especially for men, you know, and I was very appreciative of the fact that they showed uh, Uncle George 2.0 yeah. in terms of how it blinded him, you know, yeah. because uh, you know, and I'm, I don't know if I'm speaking for all guys, but you know, we can be very laser focused and tunnel vision with stuff. Yeah. You're speaking for all guys. You know, <laughs> so, you know, there are times where like, we might just be like, Hey, we asked you if you was cool with this and you say you was cool, but then we didn't pick up on the emotional void that might be present at the time, you know, like he can't, he couldn't see her shrinking right all that time because he was like but she said she was fine but you know so like but let me just let me just interject this here and then yeah. continue let me just say 
when women from a very young age, many of us are brainwashed to believe that that's what we're supposed to do. Right. So when it happens, right, when, when it presents itself, when a man proposes, you feel like, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. So let go me through the motions. Of course, yep. I'm happy to have a husband. Of course, I'm happy to have kids. And in that moment, because you've been, you know, set to believe that that's what you're supposed to do, you go along with that. But that still doesn't mean that you let go of those hopes and dreams that you always had. And eventually, like in most marriages, you know, after the honeymoon is over, things start to surface, right? Yeah. You realize, oh, wow, was this what, maybe this wasn't for me. Maybe this wasn't yeah. what I was supposed to do. And we find, you know, so many people, that's why a lot of marriages don't work, in my humble opinion, because a mm -hmm. lot of people sign up in the beginning based on this idea of what marriage is supposed to be and this idea of who we're supposed to be in the marriage. Right, right, yeah. right. So, yeah, you no, might I'm, come back for another uh, IG Live for this conversation. When you look, when you're ready for that, you know, because I, I will tell you, I have, I have learned a lot, you know, from my own amazing wife, um, and it definitely helped uh, with my perspective. Uh, from both sides, you know, just because again, like I was uncle George for a little bit, not to say I did that to my wife, but um, that, that level of blindness, you know, that blind spot was just like, I don't get it. Like what's, yeah. you know, what, what did I do to you? You say you was cool, but right. at the same time, you know, that, that support, because she gave up a lot to support him. Yeah. And I don't think he took enough time to be like, let me actually support you. Now I get it though. I do get it because, Back in 1950, I'm not letting my wife drive around by herself in these no. unknown territories, yeah. you know, like that. So I get it, but yeah, it, it was still an important conversation to have. Um, and I am glad that they did have it because, you know, losing your identity because of these expectations on the other notion of what marriage is supposed to be like or what a wife is supposed to be like without you know, self-actualizing yourself first, you know, like that, man, that that's something so we need to talk about. It does. It, it does. So much. A lot of people don't know who they are before yep. they actually join up in marriage with a whole other person. Yeah. And so you're discovering, there's all this self-discovery on both sides within a marriage, which is hard work within itself. And mm -hmm. so you're evolving mm -hmm. as an individual and trying to work within this partnership with this agreement that you all have made. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a yeah. lot. But that's, you're going to come back. We're going to talk about this. <laughs> this is a whole other thing. Whenever you want. Yeah. As a black man, what was your take on um, all the black girl magic, all these strong mm. black women? Ooh, I mean, hold on, can you, can you see the goosebumps? I can you see the goosebumps? I don't know if you can see the goosebumps. Come on. <laughs> These women I love it. I, I mean, even Dee had her own moment, right? Hippolyta had her own moment. Ruby got her own moment. Letty, because she was the lead, we got to see so many layers. Gia, even, you know, she's not a black woman. She had her own moment. Like, there were some strong stories of women, but particularly yeah. black women. Um, yeah, just these characters, and I mean the layer upon layer upon layers of these characters. Not yes, multi-dimensional. It was wonderful. The the thing that really stood out the most to me was just how much black women do for other people before they do for themselves. Yeah, I mean, like I said in my last video with Hannah. Yeah, this woman again. She was an enslaved person, raped, abused gone through hell literally she thought she was in hell think about like the psychological impact of all of that the trauma with all of that and her first primary concern was how am i going to protect all of those that are going to come after me yes after me right like the, the one in my belly the, the the ones later on she thought about all of that before herself and talk about the fact that, let's not miss the fact that she took her own life yeah. You know, because she was so worried about everybody else. And it's just one of those things that kind of remind me of how, you know, the, the stories of Big Mama and how Big Mama would just do and do and do for everybody. But at the same time, 
she's not paying attention to her own health and you know she's not doing right for herself because she's just giving yeah. so much to everyone and it's the same thing that we saw with um Hattie you know the part yeah. that broke my heart was oh. when she's in the house she heard her daughter yelling mama mama oh yeah jesus <sighs> But she's hearing the, her kill right there, yelling for her help. Yeah, she knows she can escape, but she also knows if she doesn't, the rest of the family line is in danger. And she made that hard choice right there. I mean, oh my god, right. the strength of black women is—they the true MVPs. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. There's no question. I do. I do have to say though, we did not have to see Hattie burn up in that part. We didn't have to see. Her. We didn't have to see the entirety of every bit of her body burning and then just decay. We didn't have to see that. Yeah, I know it's HBO. I know it's cable. I know that was too much. I, I know. Was just moment. I like. I didn't need to see that entire. Yeah. You know what I mean? No. I, hey, look. It, it had me messed up. First of all, <laughs> keep in mind. I have to like, like when I'm doing my videos and stuff, I have to dissect this stuff right. over and over. Like I have to go second by second, minute by minute, take the pictures. And I'm sitting here like, oh. <laughs> like okay. <laughs> you know, like I'm a, Oh my God. Wait, at least y'all get to just watch it once. <laughs> you know? People are asking, we're talking about Lovecraft country and we're talking about the season finale and the entire, um, series this year for its first season it was phenomenal we don't know if there is going to be a season two and you know we we are just hopeful but i want to I, I i don't want us to run out of time without talking about what you do uh mm -hmm. i found you on youtube and i know i'm late to the party because you have plenty of followers but nothing wrong with more so y'all please follow him tell and i know you are a movie critic um and you're often reviewing movies and do you often do television shows or was Lovecraft Country something that you were like, I can't miss this? Is it a mixture of movies and television? It, it's it's a shift, you know, because with this whole pandemic and everything, it's kind of like, well, I can't go to the movies like I used to, yeah. you know. So, um, you know, uh, because the movie industry is changing, so is the television industry with all the streaming platforms and stuff. And like that, the worlds are starting to, you know, converge. Mm -hmm. So, um you know, the funny thing is when I heard, first of all, I've been a fan of Misha Green since um, Underground. Yeah. And then um, Journey, I love, I love Journey. Every day. Um, Every day. And uh, Jonathan Majors, I've been a fan of his since uh, Last, Last Black, Black Man, Man in San, San Francisco. Francisco. There you go. So I was already a fan there, yeah. um, you know, and in the Five Bloods. So, you know, it, and then I heard about Jordan Peele was an executive producer and J.J. Abrams. And I was like, what? Yeah. This is going to be fantastic. You know, so when I started watching it, uh, I think it was like the first two or three episodes that I saw. And I was just like, this is going to be great. You know, like this is I just had that feeling. And I was just like, I'm going to cover this. So um, because the other thing is, uh, especially on YouTube, um, it's not a platform that is, how could I put this? The black perspective is not always held to a high regard. I'll just say that. And that's usually more because yeah. of the, uh, the lack of representation. I'll say that. Um, we don't have enough black creatives on the platform uh, to really make enough headway um, to talk about certain issues. Because some people in this country, unfortunately, are still very uncomfortable talking about race. Yeah. Um, so for me, I, I wanted to be very intentional because I usually, you know, cover Star Wars and Marvel and all this other nerdy stuff. I mean, I love that stuff, but um, this to me was like, this is a blurred dream, a black nerd's dream. You know, um, you, you bring in the horror, the racism, the sci-fi, the, the magic and all this stuff. Like, how could I not talk about it? And at the same time, bring in some very important context that I think other people might not usually get introduced to or might actually avoid, you know, this is kind of like how, you know, they talk about put a little sugar on it, yeah. you know, to feed people. So um, I think that's kind of what this show ended up doing and I couldn't pass that opportunity up. So yeah, I did. I decided to cover this 
um, this time. And, uh, you know, whether I'll keep doing that with other ones that remains to be seen. I, I want to make sure that, I mean, I got into this space to make sure that a black voice could be heard and articulated in a way that could still be received by everybody, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was kind of like the whole point of this for me. Yeah, and I love what you do because I love with this particularly, I have not had an opportunity to watch other things that you have done, but now I'm, I've subscribed and I will be uh, going back because I do love sci-fi, you know, probably not as much as you, but I do too. Um, and um, are, are you watching Raised by Wolves, by the way, on HBO? I covered it. Oh, you, oh, oh I, I covered it. That. I, got I, got a whole I got a whole playlist, so you just I go ahead. Because I hear the actor who plays Father. Ooh. Oh my God. I would have loved, oh, I should have done, I should have asked for it. He, I love him. If I you love get him. The opportunity, he is the absolute best. I believe it. So I believe it. I mean, I believe it. He has a whole company. He's like a gamer. He has a whole gaming company. Get out of here. Okay. Yes. His whole okay. Destiny. Okay. But anyway, I, I think yeah. we, have, we have so much to talk about. <laughs> but I want people to know that what I love what you did with what you did with Lovecraft Country was what you did on the educational tip how you would not only talk about how they covered or, or they focused on the Tulsa riots, but you would break it down and explain it and give such great context to it for people who may not have ever heard about it, right? Yeah. Um, and even along with you, and you even said in researching it that you learned some things uh, yeah. about that period of time. And I think we yeah. all did, um, but I think it's so fascinating. And I think that that is something that is missing um from, literally i think there's a lot missing from uh just everyday uh you know entertainment critiquing you know a lot of times when there are things like this that are put in front of white people that are critics they miss so much right because they just yeah. don't get it um, yeah. and i think that that's unfortunate i do think that there needs to be more of us in this space so i'm happy to see you do what you do and i tell you i thoroughly enjoyed um, your channel and where can people go to subscribe to to what you do on YouTube? How can they find you? Yeah, uh, E Man's movie reviews. It's uh, E Man, just like He Man, without the H. Okay. Uh, you could just Google it. You know, you can search it. E Man's movie reviews. Subscribe. Um, you know, I've I've got a whole bunch of different stuff. I'm always trying different things too. Like I'm a start doing a recap, you know, a uh, show where basically I catch you up on a lot of the news that happens in the entertainment world. Oh, I love that. Uh, kind of give you a little bit more context or at least share more of my thoughts with the latest movie news and stuff. Um, but I don't, first of all, I just want to say this to people too. Yes. I am not a professional comedian at all. So if you like my stuff, I get like two good jokes a month. Okay, so I just want to set that bar. Don't listen to him. He's a comedian. He is very funny. No. No. I don't want people to be like, hey, man, how come you ain't made me laugh? This hey, that's not my job. I, that's, that's not my job. I nearly passed out when you were like, when you activated the nerd thing and put the million in your I thought I was going to pass out. I said, that this dude is funny. It's so entertaining. You're so good. You're No, you're great. Thank, Thank you. you. So Thank I, you. when I saw you, I was like, I, I told my sister, I was like, let's see if we can book him. <laughs> and she was like, because this is something that I love doing. I love, and this is my first one, so I'm going to have you back. Um, I just wanted to go and just talk about things that I'm watching that I, that I love. Yeah. I am in no way a critic, but I'm watching these things because of my job um, in entertainment television. And so, like, I just interviewed... Um, Omari Hardwick about the new film Spell. Have you seen that yet? Not yet. It is on my list. Let it's on my you. list. It is so good. I like, I like what they're doing with it. I, I'm with it. It's all about hoodoo and <sighs> Loretta Devine will blow your mind in it. And he, I'm with it. so good. So, I mean, but, you know, I'm not trying to critique nothing. I'm just trying to have conversations with hey, those hey. who do. It's okay. Everybody is a critic. Everybody's a critic. Yeah. The only difference is different people have a different avenue of expressing themselves. Because, yeah. look, you can go to a movie and the second you say, hey, I like that, you're a critic. <laughs> That's it. You're a critic. That's it. So it's not difficult. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, as soon as we hear, if, as you hear about anything about season two on this, you got to let me know because my mind is baffled on that one. It's, it's I, I don't get it. I don't. I got you. 
Um, I got you. Another one I want to recommend to you. You may have seen mm -hmm. this one. His house. The actress who plays and her name is Hippolyta, right? Uh, not not Hippolyta. I'm sorry. Who plays Ruby? Starring yeah. In that, and it's a haunted house. Um, it's it's. I'm uh, literally watching that tonight. Oh. Literally watching that tonight. Okay, now you got to come back and talk about that. You I, whenever. Listen, I'm telling you. Whenever. That one. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what you think about that one. I got you. All right, now, do you review everything you watch, or how do you choose what you're going to make a video on? So, uh, because, you know, first of all, this is like the second thing. I still got a full-time job. You know, oh, so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this don't pay no bills. What? I thought this was... <laughs> I wish. I wish. No, I do this, like, when I have time to do it, you know, but... Um, I, uh, I, you know what, look, for me, I look at, are people going to be interested in it? And do I care? Does it move me? Because if it moves me, I'm going to assume I'm going to bring enough energy where it'll also move you. Yeah. You know, you ain't never going to see me review something. And I'm like, yeah, so, you know, the good part was this. And <laughs> yeah, this, the writing could have been better. Like, no, <laughs> like if, I, if I'm not feeling it, I'm not talking about it. You know, there's no point. So, um, but yeah, his house, that right there, like the concept was just like, ooh, this looks ooh. nice. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm with that. I'm with yeah. it. Yeah, it's so good. And I, even though there are, well, there's a couple of black people in it. Um, Hellstrom on... Um, yes on Hulu right now. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. like on episode five of that because I interviewed one of the actresses on that. You will love that. But let me ask you this. Okay. I got so much to ask you. Come on. Come on. Do Come on. you feel overall with his movies that Will Smith gets a bad rap? No. You don't? I mean, well, I think Will ain't watching, is he? Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I think he has picked a lot of bad roles. You think Gemini um, is bad? You think? I'm yes. Like, oh, what? oh my God! Yes. Oh my God! Yes. 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 Gemini. Man, Gemini Man should have came out five to ten years ago. If it had came out earlier, fine. And a bigger problem with that was the promotion and marketing for it, because you walk into the actual movie knowing pretty much everything that's going to happen. Well, so I was in the movie when they feel to like me, the marketing is part of the mix, right? It's kind of like the seasoning. Like if I know what it's going to smell like, yeah. then I know I have a better idea of what it's going to taste like, you know? So, um, is will not talented? No, that's definitely not the question. My man is talented. I don't think he always picks the right, the best movies and the best roles. Um, you know, he's not doing blockbuster stuff anymore. You know, like, yes, you'll want to go see it just because it's Will Smith. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, who's still talking about focus? Who's still talking about concussion? Did you enjoy it when you watch it? Probably, but they're not memorable. You know what I'm saying? But, like, if we were to talk about Men in Black, you know, if we were to talk about, like, any of his uh, past movies, man, you know, Suicide all the Squad? feelings. Did you enjoy him in Suicide Squad? I liked his role in Suicide Squad, but not the movie. Yeah. But that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, the man can act but he's not picking the best movies, yeah. you know, like his movies are just not always ideal. It, it's not always an indictment on his performance. It's just the selection. Um, well, so he's, yeah, I, he's supposed to play yeah. Venus and Serena's father, right. In the upcoming movie about the two of them. So, well, that's not yeah. sci-fi, but it, it should be an interesting role for him. I yeah. think, I think that'll be, I think that's a good choice, right? Maybe <laughs> I need to see a trailer. Let me see a trailer first. Um, because I, look, I'm just, look, I'm just saying, I don't know the last person that was checking for Venus and Serena's daddy. Right. So well, I do think he has, I think if it's, if it's written well, I think that I do want to see, I want to know more about him because he is such an interesting I, I, figure. I'm interested. I'm, I'm interested. Like, and I, I'm not going to just throw it out and be like, oh, man, that's another bad one. I'm interested, but I can't say for sure, boom, that's going to make waves. Now, he does have another movie coming out. And by the way, shout out to the people in the comments. Uh, bad Boys was good. Was you know, good. and that, 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 that was good. That was but good. at the same time, like, that's, that's a cakewalk for him. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
<laughs> his, beauty, his beauty shots in action, it, but he was great in it. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed Bad Boys. I thought it was definitely dope. Yeah. Um, but he does have, a, I think it's either a movie or a show about, and I hate that I don't know this off the top of my head, but it's going to be about like a runaway slave. You know, the time where we see the the picture of the slave with the messed up back, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. being whooped and stuff. Like, he's going to be that character. Oh. Um, I think that will probably be way more interesting um, probably than the Venus and Serena story. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. We'll see. I mean, yeah. you know, he does do drama really well, but yeah. That's oh, absolutely. How did you like Jamie Foxx? And if you reviewed this, I'm going to go watch it the minute we stop. The Jamie Foxx, oh, forgive me for not knowing. Uh, the uh, Power Project? Yes. Project Power? Yes. I liked it. Um, I like how unique it was, you know. Uh, I mean, there was a couple issues with it, but it was like, it was entertaining. It wasn't meant yeah. to be some award-winning type of thing or whatever. So uh, I was happy just with the fact that, you know, um, they gave us something different, you know, and yeah. something to just enjoy as a popcorn flick, you know. So I was very okay with that. Yeah. yeah. So what what have you been watching um, this mm -hmm. summer? Or what have you seen that what give me some recommendations of what people sure. should check out? Yeah. So uh, right now, on HBO Max, um, I definitely like Charm City Kings. Mm -hmm. um, Meek Mill is in there. Uh, you got like a young up and coming actor. Um, it's a coming of age story. You know, it's kind of, it, it, I'm not going to say it's like the best thing in the world, but it's a coming of age story told through the lens of black folks, you know, through a black perspective, at least. Um, I don't know if the director is black, but uh, you still get the feel that it's authentic. And I think that's kind of like the most important thing with these uh, stories. Um Concrete Cowboys is also going to be something is to look out Idris? for. That's with Idris. Um, that's definitely going to be nice. Um, what else? Oh, oh, One Night in Miami. <gasps> Regina that's King's Regina King, right? directorial Regina. debut. Talk about Beautiful. what that's about a little bit so people will know. So it's a, it's a fictional story, um, <clears throat> but it, it, I, I do believe it's based off of a play as well. Um, but it takes place with uh, basically a conversation between Sam Cooke, Muhammad Ali, uh, Jim Brown, the football player, and uh, Malcolm X. And uh, a lot of them are just talking about their different roles in the black community um, and the different things that they do within the black community. Um, and I mean, you're going there for, you know, it's not like a lot of action or anything like that, but you're going there for the dialogue more so than anything else. Um, that, that was definitely, I mean, for a directorial debut, she killed it. She, yeah. she knocked it out the park. Um, I do think you will hear some awards conversation, uh, from that. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out. And right now I believe on Netflix, uh, trial of the Chicago seven. Oh, I just saw that. Excellent. Look, um, uh, Yaya uh, Abdul Mateen. Yeah, my man did Bobby C. That was that so right there. Good. He killed it. He he needs a supporting acting award or something for that one because he. Yeah. He so does. that that right there is something else to watch. So yeah, I, look, you, you got a lot. You got a lot. A lot. Do you think we'll <laughs> see? Do you think that in the next award season that Lovecraft Country will get the attention that it deserves from mainstream? It better. Awards? It better, you know, I mean, but it, my problem is kind of like, you know, especially, you know, not just for TV, but also for movies with the whole Oscar so white stuff. Um, my, my issue is more so the fact that <sighs> Hollywood has like this weird trend of where they want to be allies for just a year yeah. and then they kind of fall right back. You know, like, for example, Oscar So White was not the first time. This is like the third time oh, yeah. Oscar So White is a thing. Yeah. You know, the third time. Um, I remember covering it back in, like, 2016. Yeah. And then it came back again in, like, what, 2018 or something. So I'm just like, like a cycle. it's a cycle. It's like, oh, okay, y'all going to give us this year. And then next year, y'all go back to doing what y'all do, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, yes, there are a couple changes that have happened. Like, they're increasing the amount of uh, voters, um, because that's huge. The people that vote, I'm not saying that they're racist. I'm not saying anything like that, but they will watch what they want to watch. 
So if you have a group of voters that are majority, you know, the majority are older white men, they're going to watch what appeals to older white men. Exactly. And that's just what it is. Yeah. So you have to diversify the voting body so that way you can have a good mixture of people watching things. Because I remember even when Get Out came out, there were like actual voters that were like, I don't want to see it. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't even want to go see it. Yeah. What? You know, so, you know, they, they, I hope, and I do believe that, um, you know, sim cause I, I want to say Watchmen just won like a whole bunch of stuff too. Yes. Um, this, this also better, you know, get on the bandwagon of, uh, getting a couple of awards cause it's definitely needed for yeah. sure. I agree. Well, we are almost out of time. I know you know how uh, IG is. They'll kick you right on off. So I want to <laughs> properly thank you. This has been a delight, and I have to have you back on. I think you should be doing this full-time. No knocking to your office. Uh, hey, if somebody won't pay a brother, pay me. <laughs> I, I don't know who it is, BET, are, uh, uh, whoever. You're so good. <laughs> you're so good. at. I'm telling you, you're so good at what you're doing. Thank you so Definitely. much. They need to give you all the dollars. People need to follow you, support you with everything you're doing, Iman. I really, I, I sincerely thank you. that you are talented with this stuff. Thank this you so stuff, much. Very entertaining. Well, thank you for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. And I'm going to have you back. I'm going to bug you. Whenever. <laughs> it's an auto yes. Auto yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, be well. And thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye.